Hi Karen, go for it. Okay, welcome to the mini MOOC. I hope you're all there. This is a mini MOOC on supporting community empowerment. The person you can see on your screen should be Phil Marston, who's our education technology consultant for this project. And he's going to do an online induction for you today so that we can make sure your technology is working. Ramon's here too, and Ramon Al Bishawi will be getting your messages about anything that's not working and being able to help you. So Phil's going to start off by talking you through the different tasks that you need for week one. So good luck, and I hope you enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye. Thanks, Karen. Um, um, can, can I just check um, whether everybody's actually able to see this broadcast? Um, I'm not very clear at the moment how many people are actually managing to access it. So in case you wonder why I keep looking over my shoulder, it's because um, Ramon is sitting over there in the corner. In fact, mm -hmm. you can see me waving behind her. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so what, what the plan is, is um, to... In just a minute, uh, let me make some changes there. Uh, um, I'm going to work my way through um, the website, um, introducing you to, oops, not that one. Introducing you to the uh, um, different parts of this um, induction week. Um, I'm just hesitating because I'm still waiting to see that um, we've got enough people watching this. Okay, so um, it sounds like we've got quite a few people um, on on board and able to see it. So I'll just carry on, and um, the recording will go up at the end of this session. Um, so, really, this is part of this project is is about um, making sure that uh, everybody can access um, all these different technologies. Um, one in terms of being able to interact with the technologies with your communities at a later date, but two actually being able to um, engage in CPD um, in your workplace. Um, so we've used a selection of um, basic technologies that everybody should be able to access, um, but may not be able to access. Um, and so these this week is about trying at, trying to access these technologies, and if you can't, speaking to the tech people in your workplace to um, try and resolve those issues. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just run through the different technologies that we're going to use, and you can ask um, questions on the uh, comments thing and Ramon's going to um, collate those and after each um, after I talk about each activity um, we'll just take a moment and uh, see if there's any particular questions that anybody has to answer um, so as you can see from this list here um, the first activity was this U YouTube broadcast um, and so the reason we're actually opening up with this YouTube broadcast is because um, all the later workshops, um, all the pr later presentations and the guest speakers will be presented to you through YouTube. Um, you may have heard a few comments made about using Google Hangouts um, in preparation for this course. Um, we've actually decided that um, it's a lot easier for you to access YouTube than it is to access Hangouts. So we're just going to broadcast through YouTube um, and allow you to chat in the chat chat area. Um, if anybody's got any comments or opinions on that, feel free to make a comment in the tech um, um, area of the Google uh, group um, that uh, is linked to from this. Um, so um, from what Ramon is saying, um, 
people who are actually accessing uh, YouTube and should be able to hear me okay. Um, and you all seem to be participating in the conversation. So we'll move on to the next activity. Unless you want to shout at Ramon and, and say there's something else you want to talk about. Okay, so um, I, Ramon was speaking to me across the room there and, and saying that a few of you had um, issues with accessing YouTube um, and she's right, we, we can't actually address those um, um, just now through, the, through this, um, but what we can do is try and help you and um, maybe hook you up with um, one of the textures that we're trying to um, arrange for the course uh, and maybe point you in the right direction either through um, your line manager or the North Alliance or um, uh, your employer um, to be able to ask the right questions to get YouTube enabled for you. Um, so I'm just going to move on to um, activity two um, and again I'll just quickly nip over this because um, most of you seem to be logged onto the, the, the Google group okay. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight that um, we are aware of the kind of issues that people have in terms of accessing mm -hmm. the, the different te technologies from the workplace um, and one of the reasons we chose Google groups um, is that you can actually register for that using your work email and in the options and settings within the um, the group uh, in your own account settings, you can actually set to, uh, it to notify you any new posts via email. Um, so when you receive an email saying that there's a new post, it'll actually have the 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 um, all the same information in the post as if you were looking at it on the web page, um, and you can reply to that email directly from your email account, um, and it will get posted into the Google group. So um, that makes life an awful lot easier. Um, does anyone have any questions to direct at Ramon before I move on to the next? Okay, so Ramon is um, bringing up a, um, a point there um, about the previous activity um, where um, somebody was saying that they, they couldn't comment and watch the video at the same time. Um, uh, yes, good point. Um, one trick is to actually um, open YouTube in a separate window. Um, and have the two windows side by side if you've got a big enough screen. Um, beyond that, uh, I'll have a think about how we can um, set up the posting system in such a way that you can actually view the screen, uh, view the YouTube and the comments at the same time, um, but I'll have to look into that. Um, but I presume there's no um, questions regarding using Google Groups. Okay, so um, I'm getting um, being given comments to, um, from Ramon across the room, um, and she was just commenting on some of the the posts that people have made. So um, uh, we'll move on to um, blogging. So the first two induction activities. Are, um, goodness me, where's that? No what's that noise? Um, the first two induction activities are. Um, 
um, the ones that you have to do to start engaging with the, uh, the, the course straight away. Um, activity three doesn't become relevant until um, um, until uh, week three. Um, and uh, in week three, you'll be um, asked to make a blog post and share it with the, um, the rest of the group. Uh, it, if I remember rightly, it's, it's just reflecting on um, uh, a, a community activity. Um, um, and you'll be able to read that in, in, on the wiki um, relating to week three. Um, I'll just check with Ramon if there's any um, particular questions anybody's got about um, blogging at the moment. Is there anything coming up? Uh, Phil, there's no questions coming up now. Um, just Kate just directing me to take my mute off, uh, so I did that, but I'm going to mute myself again. No questions so far. Okay, uh, in which case I will um, move on. Um, um, so just a couple of comments here. If you are thinking about engaging in this sort of thing um, uh, in the longer term and you have something in mind, um, the two main um, popular blogging sites are WordPress and Blogger. Um, Blogger is a, a lot more basic and simple if you're, if you're new to this and you're um, just um, wanting to um, dip your toe in the water. Um, WordPress is also very, very easy, um, but it has a lot more functionality um, so that um, once you've got over the initial um, uh, getting used to it, um, you've got a lot more scope to uh, run with it and uh, stretch your legs, as it were. Um, so. Personally, I always, always prefer WordPress. Um, having said that, again, if you've got a Google account, um, Blogger is built into Google and it's all part of it. So um, uh, you may find that you just want to keep that one um, login uh, details um, and just have everything integrated. Um, I'll just draw attention here as well to the fact that um, all the technologies that um, that we're using um, have a, the opportunity to be able to tag things. If you tag with this uh, the hashtag for for the course, um, it means that everything should be um, it should be possible to aggregate everything on all the different sites, even if you don't necessarily know where the links are. Um, as as things go on, we'll be able to um, bring it all together. Um, and you'll be able to find what other people are saying, even if you haven't seen a direct link to what they're saying. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, so in week four, um, you're going to be asked to um, put up um, some um, information either on a project, a community project you know about, or um, on a community project um, that you would like to um, propose uh, or, or an idea that you have um, and share that with the rest of the group and people can make uh, comments about each other's projects uh, and learn from them. Um, and the way we've chosen to do that is um, we've created a projects page on the wiki where um, uh, we'll, we'll put up a template of the kind of details to put up um, and we'll, I guess we'll kind of have um, uh, examples of projects that have gone before and examples of projects that um, people have in mind um, and you'll be able to um, edit the wiki and get a feel for what editing wikis is like um, in that. I notice uh, an awful lot of people have already registered um, to be a member of the wiki so um, it doesn't look like anybody's having any problems there. Um, we've also created the Scratchpad page um, where um, you can see the, the link here um, and it's just a duplicate of the welcome page and you can go in and you can do whatever you want in there in terms of editing it um, though obviously if anybody puts anything um, dodgy up we will um, take that down and ban them. Um, so unless there are any comments coming through that Ramon wants to field to me, we'll move on to the, the next activity. Phil, 
Phil, just to say, um, Julie's just giving some feedback about how things are looking. Just she's saying, been watching on YouTube live reception, but not as good as in the wiki. So that's quite interesting. It's good feedback for us. It's good to know what's happening, mm. what's what's better quality, but but no real comments as such so far. Okay, that's grand. Thanks for that, Julie. Um, so week five, um, you don't actually have to do anything in terms of um, this this week's activities. Um, there's no sites to register with. There's nothing to try out. Uh, in week five, we're going to introduce you to um, Google Forms, um, and we're going to conduct a survey um, uh, and in conjunction with you actually um, conducting a survey and we're going to gather some data from you um, and um, this again um, introduces you to a, another free technology which um, is very widely used in all sorts of projects um, online where you can uh, gather user information um, uh, you know you could be asking them uh, the, what kind of organizations they're associated with. Um, you could be asking them uh, what technologies they uh, have access to, uh, how much time they spend watching TV, any anything that you can imagine um, um, surveying people about. Um, you can generate a online survey using Google Docs and this particular forms feature and all that survey data ends up getting stored in uh, the equivalent of an Excel spreadsheet that you can then go and download and analyze. Um, so it's a really fantastic tool um, for, for gathering data um, and the rest of the Google Docs suite is a great tool for doing collaboration. Um, so I'll move on to activity six and I'll rely on Ramon flagging anything up with me if Anybody has any comments about Google Docs and Forms? Um, so activity six um, just finishes it um, all off. Um, one of the uh, the things about when we're doing projects in in the community is um, we will quite often gather together photos and uh, images, uh, and or for instance, if we're at a conference or in a workshop and, and brainstorming, we can take photographs of um, the maps or um, the scribbles we've done on the on the big flip chart paper and things like that. Um, so it's quite good to have a place where you can store all these images um, um, and regulate the access to them or share them or embed them in your blog and things like that. So um, the final activity is um, registering with a, a, a photo sharing service. Um, and then uploading images to that and sharing it with the rest of us. So there's four services that um, we've we've identified um, here. Flickr is probably the most well known and, and most common. Um, and uh, I certainly have a number of Flickr accounts. Um, one of the nice things on Flickr is um, there's ways that you can actually set up. Um, uh, groups on Flickr, a bit like the Google Groups thing, so individuals can have their own account and upload images from a particular event, but they can link together and create an event page um, from all the different accounts um, and then share that. Um, and so it's not necessarily sharing everybody's whole album, it's just sharing the, the common um, photos from the events. Uh, so that's quite a nice um, thing I've used in other collaborative learning projects. Um, the other nice thing with Flickr is um, uh, there are various different ways um, from an image in Flickr or uh, if you collect things into albums um, which uh, are called sets on uh, Flickr is you can actually share those. So you'll see I think it's week two um, in the, the course wiki um, we've shared all the postcards from um, that were advertising this event. Um, we shared them as images, and, and so there's a nice little slideshow that um, plays through there. Um, and the other thing you can do on Flickr is um, actually get the embed code and embed images in your blog and uh, wiki and wherever else. Um, and that's um, that means you don't have to have uh, multiple uploads of your images all over the place. Can just upload them to Flickr and and then um, just use that one place um, for all your images. Um, Picasa is very similar. Uh, it's uh, there's two aspects to Picasa. Um, 
Uh, it's linked into your photo albums on Google if you have a Google account, um, but it, it is also a, a standalone app that you can download onto your desktop. And uh, if anybody's familiar with uh, iPhoto on the Mac, it's it's a, a similar system, um, and, and it works both on Macs and PCs, uh, and it, la it lets you organize your images uh, and select which ones you want to upload to Google and things like that. Uh, Instagram, again, is um, uh, a little more um, different. It's very much focused on um, mobile phone users. Um, the whole idea is that you, you take a picture on your phone, you can edit it on your phone, and you can share it from your phone. Um, so although I think it's getting to the point where you can actually view images on the Instagram website, the website isn't designed for viewing images. Um, everything's designed to be done from your phone and then shared with things like Twitter and Facebook. Um, and then finally, Facebook. Um, if you have a Facebook account, an awful lot of people just use the photo albums in Facebook. Um, and the sharing functionality in that, I don't know how easy it is to share in terms of embedding those images um, in your blogs in the way that you can with Flickr. Um, but it may be all you need um, for for what you're trying to do. So um, investigate those different ones. You've got plenty of time until week six um, to decide which tool um, suits you best, um, and then you can um, share those images with the, the rest of us. Um, we'll provide more information in week six about just exactly how we're going to um, bring all of the different images together from all the different people. Um, so that's all of the activities outlined. Um, I can hear Ramon frantically typing away. Um, I'll see if there's any feedback that anybody's um, feeding through. Okay, Phil, we do have a few issues. Um, just bear with me, please. Kate McLean says there's still no picture. Um, sorry, just bear with me. Um, and she's lost the video stream, but she can still hear you. And we, Brian's, I'm messaging Brian just now, but um, it's mainly Kate. Some people can't actually see you, and I'm wondering that's bec if that's because you've got the slides up. So obviously they wouldn't see you. They see the slides as you're presenting them. So I'm just responding about that. Okay, um, well, just for those of you that can still hear me, um, I'll just um, um, let you know I, you can't see me because um, I'm sharing my desktop at the moment. Um, so one of, the, um, one of the things we'll do is we'll actually create a page on the, the wiki um, that lists all the technology that we're using for um, the, the whole MOOC. Um, and uh, associated technologies as well, so that you can make use of them yourself in your own community projects. Um, so I mentioned right at the very start that we decided to use, um, uh, let people view the this um, webinars via YouTube broadcasts, um, rather than trying to get people to um, use Hangouts. Um, I'm actually in the Hangout broadcasting into YouTube at the moment. In fact, we all, all three of us are. Um, and uh, one of the things that you can do within a Hangout is actually share your screen. So that's me back again. Um, uh, there are a number of different tools um, in Hangouts, and it just seemed far too complicated to try and uh, introduce everybody to all the different tools um, that we ourselves are still trying to get used to. Um, but you can do presentations, you can do um, scribbling on uh, whiteboards, um, you can edit um, Google Docs, um, you can look at um, YouTube videos even within the Hangout. Um, we felt that was too complicated um, for the purposes of um, presenting um, the, um, the different speakers. Um, and having everybody engage with that. Um, so um, that's something that if you've got a Google account, you can create a Hangout. And if you're trying to have a meeting with some of your colleagues in your particular area, um, then you can have uh, small meetings through Hangout and experiment with the tools then. Um, 
uh, we thought that was probably better but we'll put some explanation of that in the tech, um, tech pages for you um, I don't know whether Karen wants to um, maybe uh, say anything um, to finish that off or whether Ramon has any um, uh, final remarks um, coming through okay Ramon's raising a hand um, I do just have a comment from Dave just saying that it's nice to get a summary of the tools what a great idea so many things um, need to you know need to keep a handle on them so just some feedback there for you Phil thank you thanks Dave um, I'll hand you over to Karen then uh, your mic isn't on Karen it is now I think yeah, yep, it is now. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Phil and Ramon very much for all the work they've done on getting this MOOC ready to run. It's really good. And I'd like to just remind everybody to come back on uh, Monday the 19th at 2 o'clock because it's going to be really exciting and I'm really looking forward to it. So have a good time on the course. I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Karen. Bye-bye, Phil. Bye-bye, Ramon. <laughs> okay, I'll end it there.